Hey there, this is Natalie, and now we're over 30 chapters into Arc 7 of ReZero, I thought it was a good time to just make a casual discussion type video talking about the arc so far and how I think it compares to previous arcs. This video is obviously going to contain spoilers for all of Arc 7 so far, which is up to chapter 33. But if you're not caught up on what happens in the untranslated chapters, check out my friend JakeZ123, who puts up chapter summary videos within a couple of hours of new chapters dropping. I've stopped doing my own chapter summary videos because I got a bit nervous about ReZero content when I was getting strikes from Kadokawa, but I was way slower than Jake anyway, and there wasn't all that much reason to watch both of us. So he's now the daddy of Arc 7 chapter summaries, and I'm just going to make some Arc 7 content like this from time to time while I'm also working on other stuff. I'm going to be starting with some Mushoku Tensei analysis stuff soon too. I'm just reading the novels now, getting ready for that. So if you like Mushoku Tensei as well as ReZero, make sure you're subscribed. It's going to be fairly similar to my ReZero stuff, only without the theories because that story's finished. So there will be some anime only content and some stuff for people who've read the source material. But with that YouTuber stuff out of the way, let's take a look at Arc 7. Now, the first thing I really like about the current arc is the way it got straight into some stuff happening, straight to the location of the arc, and straight into addressing some of the questions left over from the end of arc 6. While I love arcs 4, 5 and 6, they all began with a slow start at the mansion, which did generally serve to set up some of the stuff in the arc, but really wasn't especially exciting. Plot-wise, if you think about Arc 6, you could pretty much forget everything that happened before they entered the desert without losing much. Arc 4 took 8 chapters just to get them to the sanctuary, and with Arc 5, it was kind of important to have that kind of start due to needing to re-establish everything after the time skip before the plot kicked in. But, you know, it wasn't until they reached Pristella that things actually got interesting story-wise. These scenes aren't bad, they do provide some characterization, but I'd come to kind of expect half a volume of nothing much happening at the start of each arc. In arc 7, we had answers about where Subaru and Rem were and how they got there. We had an immediate threat for Subaru to deal with. We had the mystery of what's up with Louis Arnebb to wonder about, and an important new character in the form of Vincent, though we didn't know for sure it was him. And all of that was just in the first couple of chapters. I feel like this was a good move. Every arc has its own feel, but they typically all had that downtime at the start. Shaking things up and having this arc start the moment after arc 6 ended gives us no time to breathe, and that helps to convey that Subaru 2 is thrust into this situation without a second's rest after the arc 6 climax. It breaks up one of the only formulas ReZero has, and gives a real sense of the pressure on our boy at this stage in the story. Instead of the mansion scenes, we had Subaru's memories at the start of each of the first seven chapters, which gave us new scenes we hadn't seen before with members of the cast at the mansion, but instead of that calm before the storm feeling, we're looking at this slice of life stuff from the perspective of Subaru being far away from all of those people, missing them, and being reminded of those karma times by things that come up while he's trying to understand what's going on in Valakia. It's kind of a perversion of the lighter ReZero moments we usually get at the start of arcs into something darker, which matches Subaru's situation and mood. So if you couldn't tell, I really like the way this arc started. I also like what's being done with Rem. I did find this more stubborn version of Rem frustrating at the beginning, not in the sense that I thought it was bad for the story, just that I personally would have ditched her and let the ungrateful cow fend for herself if I was Subaru. The fact that he never even considers this, despite her being a complete liability, says a lot about his character and how much Rem matters to him. It's been a slow process of him winning any degree of trust from her, but it's definitely interesting, and the reaction from Subaru when she tells him he's not a hero was, I think, a pretty powerful character moment for him. I think the key to getting Rem's memories back is to return to the Hall of Memories, where Louis previously discarded them, which is how Rem was able to appear to Subaru there and give him the stand-up speech. Maybe Louis's presence and current state has something to do with them needing to eventually go there, but given this isn't something Subaru's even thinking about trying to solve at the moment, it seems likely that we'll have this version of Rem for a long time to come. 
It's even possible that there won't be a way to get her memories back. And this new REM being built from the ground up with new memories and relationships is the REM we'll have for the rest of the story. Even though there's already been a fair amount of amnesia in the plot, I don't think it feels cheap or lazy here, as it can do in some stories. And I think watching Subaru try to connect with Rem again is actually quite interesting. Showing us what Rem is like without the baggage of her inferiority complex about Ram, her memories of her childhood, and her love for Subaru. If she gets her memories back, I think it will be a case of this Rem merging with her old memories, much as Subaru did in Arc 6, so she would retain what she's felt and experienced without them. This could be the way Rem overcomes a lot of her issues. The fact Subaru is moving through the first part of this arc with basically no characters he knows, with Rem having amnesia, and Louis, who disgusts him anyway, having had a complete personality change, is kind of a return to those feelings of isolation we got from Subaru in the first three arcs. Only in this case, he does have people in this world he's close to, they just can't reach him. This lack of Subaru's acquaintances appearing in the first part of the arc, up until Priscilla and Al show up, also means that as an audience, we're being introduced to an abundance of new characters. If you've read X4 or some of the side stories about Priscilla, then Vincent and Arakia don't really count as new characters for the audience, but I'm including them in this part anyway, just for ease of discussion. Arc 6 was fairly light on new cast members, particularly ones that are still with us, and of characters likely to continue to play a role moving forward, there was really only Louis, who as I said is now acting like a completely different person anyway, and Volcanica, who Subaru never actually met, though there is a possibility Shaola may come back in some way later on. Arc 7 brings us a lot of new characters, with the most notable aside from Vincent being the Shudrak, particularly Mizelda, Utakata, Tarita, Holly and Kuna, the merchant siblings Flop and Medium, and Bottercliff, the guy with the best name in the entire series, Dicker Ottoman, and of course, Todd and Jamal. Even the so far minor character of Rowan was pretty cool. It wouldn't surprise me if he appears again, given Tape doesn't tend to put in too many throwaway one scene characters. Now, Vincent is my husbando, so it goes without saying that he's my favorite of the bunch. It was nice of Tape to put in a guy in my age range who isn't Roswell at last. But other than him, I really like Todd and Jamal. Well, like is probably the wrong word for Todd, the guy's a bastard, but he's an interesting bastard. And I really liked the chapter that followed these two as Todd tried to get out of the city with Arakia. I like the concept of the Shudrak and their character designs, and I'm interested to see what role they're going to play in the rest of the arc. Flop is kind of local Otto, not as smart and a bit sillier, but reliable, kind and brave when it counts and the dynamic between him and Medium provides a bit of comic relief without it feeling forced. Speaking of comic relief, the cross-dressing plan was pretty entertaining. It required a bit of suspension of disbelief that an 18-year-old man who's always either working out or fighting wouldn't be too buff to pull off a revealing outfit like that while still convincing people he's a beautiful woman. But in Valakia, they do value strength, so a lot of the women are probably ripped anyway, based on Mizelda's abs of insanity and Medium's fighting ability with a heavy barbarian sword. He was also lucky to have two pretty boys around to pull off the plan with. It's also surprising how effective cross-dressing is as a disguise in ReZero, though that's a pretty common anime trope. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work in real life, but I can't find a guy around here to test it out on due to beards being in fashion. There are also some new characters who've been mentioned but not seen yet. Some of them have appeared in side stories or in X4, like some of the Divine Generals and Priscilla's backer, but others we haven't seen yet at all. I'm interested to see if we do get to encounter Todd's fiance Katya, for instance. With Todd being such an unusual personality, it'll be interesting to see whether she's also twisted or if she's a nice person who doesn't know what the real Todd is like. But what about the plot? Well, so far it has been very much Subaru being dragged into a situation that doesn't contribute to his overall goals or to solving the mysteries established around him in any obvious way. 
This means it really depends whether you can get invested in what's happening in Wallachia, whether you'll find it interesting and exciting, or whether you'll perhaps be hoping things begin to tie into the rest of the story more as quickly as possible. There has certainly been some tense action and liberal use of Return by Death so far, and the intrigue around Vincent's situation is, to me at least, an interesting scenario to put Subaru into. But I think some people have been finding it a bit frustrating that there has been more of a focus on all these new characters and the politics of a country we haven't really heard that much about before, and less on the mysteries set up around the characters we do know, like Rem, Louis and Subaru. Rem has amnesia and the plot is not focusing on curing her. Louis is acting very sus, but the plot isn't focused on exploring what's going on there. Subaru's arm regrew, and that wasn't really explored yet either. Plus, Subaru should be in danger from mana poisoning without Beatrice, but that hasn't come up at all yet, even as something he's thinking about. I think personally that that's going to come up in relation to the Crystal Palace. If you've read X4, you'll know what that is, and it really seems like that place was kind of invented specifically to be a problem for Subaru with his broken gate. It feels very much like the things we would ordinarily be hoping for answers about are really more things being set up for later. This will probably prove to be just fine once we have the whole arc, but at the current point, I can see why some people were feeling frustrated by the lack of existing characters or existing mysteries featuring in the arc so far. I think that having Priscilla and Al finally enter the arc makes a lot of difference to this. I mean, most people were hoping for some answers about Al in this arc, and now he's here. Plus, Priscilla's involvement ties all of the stuff going on in Wallachia into the royal selection plot in a more meaningful way than just, well, Vincent and Priscilla are related. I do personally like the Wallachia plot, but I'm a Priscilla fan, and I really liked Vincent and Cecilus in X4, so I was interested in that. For people who weren't so much, I think Arc 7 will really start to get more engaging once more of the Lagunican characters show up, and it becomes clearer how the situation in Wallachia, and its possible outcomes, is going to affect the rest of the world. We've been promised various existing characters in this arc, including Garfield and Roswell, so I think once they get involved, this plot will stop feeling so detached from the rest of the story. But don't get me wrong, I think the fact it does feel detached is actually a good thing in terms of what it's trying to do. Subaru himself is, after all, completely cut off from everyone and everything he knows, but taking the chapters we have in isolation, it's pretty hard to figure out what any of this stuff with Vincent has to do with Subaru's established goals and circumstances in this world. We know it will all come together later though, and so I'm really looking forward to seeing just how that happens. But what do you guys think of Arc 7 so far? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you to my patrons on Patreon, and thank you to all of the people who support me by subscribing to my channel and liking my videos. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again very soon.